calling to order the special meeting of the Arts Commission on this Friday, July 23rd, 2021. And s some of the commissioners are here in chambers and some have zoomed in. So can you take a roll call, please, Luis? Absolutely. Uh, Chair Tosher? Here. Uh, Vice Chair Chisholm? Present. Commissioner Golden? Here. Commissioner Steiner? Here. Commissioner Gerber? Here. And Commissioner West? Here. Perfect. And we are also joined by uh, our council liaison, uh, council member Susan Francina. Great. Okay. Um, let's have a recital of the Pledge of Allegiance. Luis, okay. do you want to lead us? I'll go ahead and stand. Right hand over the heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God and the liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, this is the time in the meeting where I'm calling upon any members of the public who wish to make a public comment unrelated to our agenda item, which will be discussed later in the agenda. So if there's anyone that wants to make a public comment, did you want to, well, Susan? I'm going to wait till the end and if I have anything to say, respond to the, what's on the agenda. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, today we have one discussion item, and it's concerning a public art jury uh, and the chair of the Public Art Committee, Christine Golden, will begin with the presentation. There will be time for clarifying questions after her presentation. Thank you, thank you, Chair Tosher. And um, I would ask, uh, Luis, could you put up the first sheet sure. of the presentation? Okay, that's great. And um, I think you'll see when to scroll it down, not yet. Uh, <clears throat> I, I wanna start out by saying that um, it's really nice to see some members of the audience who are interested in this process here. So welcome and thank you for being here. And um, I also wanna just uh, on a personal note say that um, my hearing has really gone to hell in a handbag over the last uh, couple months. And so if I'm cupping my ear, it's because I don't hear you. And I may turn to Marcy and ask her to repeat a question when we get to the questioning stage, because what I'm finding is that I'm, I'm yelling, uh, because I don't hear myself unless I cup my ear. And now I can hear myself, so I know it's gonna look a little strange, and please bear with me. Uh, the next thing I wanna say is that uh, a lot of questions have come up about the process of selecting a public art jury, and I'm really happy that these questions did come up because we have a lot of new members, and uh, it behooves uh, me to go over this process for everybody and to clarify it. So that's what we're gonna do first. And we're gonna start by talking about the past public art juries and the selection process that was used for those past juries. <clears throat> and there's only been one project uh, since I have been chair, that would be for 10 years, uh, where we've had a select a public art jury, and that's the paint box project. And so if you look at that, um, and now you can scroll up a little bit, Eric, if you, um, Eric, Luis, if you would. Um, okay, that's good. Uh, first, uh, at a, a meeting, a whole Arts Commission meeting, all the commissioners were invited to submit names. And they did so by email. And then um, at the same meeting, everyone agreed that the Public Art Committee would select a member to represent the Arts Commission um, because the Public Art Committee is most familiar with the process. And so that was the next thing we did. And then at that same meeting, the commission voted to give full discretion to the Public Art Committee to create the jury. And they said there was no need to return to the Arts Commission to approve the slate because indeed, if you look at the uh, code, it only says that the Public Art Jury shall be um, uh, selected by the, uh, uh, by the Arts Commission. It never says that uh, a vote has to be taken. And the way it was interpreted at that time 
was that the selection was that the um, commission, everyone on the commission got to submit names. And so that commission considered that to be how the selection happened, by their submitting names. And then they had total confidence and trust in the integrity of the Public Art Committee to give them all a voice on that jury. And that's what we did. And then if you scroll down, you will see that it was an extremely efficient process. It worked really well. The process is quite fluid. And that needs to happen if this is going to work because you don't know that a pick is going to be available. Somebody may not be available. And that former commission recognized that and recognized and gave full permission to the Public Art Committee to go to the next person on the list if someone wasn't available. Otherwise, we would have had to come back for meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting every time someone wasn't available, a new, a new meeting to approve it. And uh, that just that commission didn't feel that was efficient or workable. And as I said, they gave us full permission um, to do what we considered to be the public art committee task, which was to make the calls and um, come up with a jury. And what, what ended up in that case was we had a very well-balanced, effective jury. It really worked exceptionally well. So now we're gonna go on to the next slide, which is the present public art jury. And this one is for Ojai Valley Imports. And it falls under a different ordinance. It falls under the mural ordinance. And we're going to talk, I'll talk about that during the presentation. This is our first mural ordinance project. So this is like a dry run for us to figure out how to do everything um, correctly for the mural ordinance project. And a um, little, little scrolling up there, uh, Luis, please. That's good. Okay. And a question has been posed, should there be a jury selection pro process specific to the mural ordinance? And I, I want to speak to that. Um, over the course of 10 years, one of the things I've learned is that every single project is different. And I would never recommend that there is a selection process because one size simply doesn't fit all. And um, we would prefer to have a fluid process where, depending on the project, we might say, well, you know, this time let's do it this way. Also, if you look at both the public art ordinance code and if you look at the mural ordinance code, you'll see there's no process defined in either one of those. And um, I talked to City about that, and uh, indeed, uh, processes that are handled by commission and commission committees are not included in ordinances. So that would simply mean that if you want to create a process, that the whole commission would be directing the public art committee on how they wanted the public art committee to do their job. And in this case, as I said, it's fluid. We'd have to be coming back and forth constantly uh, when it came to a jury selection. So. For that reason, you'll see the or up there, the paint box project procedures, do they work for a mural project? And, and I feel that clearly they do, that the fact it's a mural ordinance doesn't change that we're selecting people to serve on a public art jury. Okay, so then let's go to timeliness because that also has come up. Um, the question has been asked, like, are we rushing this? And um, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as accommodating a business here in Ojai, a business owner. I think it's my duty as an arts commissioner to uh, help uh, move things along and not impede a business owner. And for those of you listening that might not know this, uh, J, um, our, our JR, Luna, who uh, took over Ojai Imports from Alan Shook, who retired, um, he ha he's devoted to the public art mural that's going up on this building. He not only hired five Ojai studio artists, but he's giving a stipend to each one of them, and he's giving money 
to the Ojai Studio, Studio Artist Scholarship Fund. I just feel that our, my duty is to move this process along for him and not to um, slow it down and, and, and bog it down with um, what I think are unnecessary technicalities. I think timeliness is, is part of what we do as um, a commission on behalf of the city. And I think the city would expect us to move this along as well. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Thank you, Louise. So now I want to talk about what the mural ordinance public art jury requirements are. <clears throat> what the ordinance says is that there are seven slots that should be selected. One artist, two art professionals, one community member at large, one member of the Arts Commission, I see I left the O off, <laughs> one member of either the Historic Preservation, it should say, PR, uh, PR, Yes, or the Planning Commission, that's a choice that we make. And the building owner or the building owner's representative or both, uh, the building owner can bring someone along, that's fine. Uh, there wouldn't be a, another vote, but they certainly could have someone on hand to answer questions. Okay, now we're gonna move it up down and we're gonna see that there are um, uh, three filled slots which seems to be missing on yours, but not mine. Okay, three filled slots, and I wanna talk about what those three filled slots are. So if you could um, send the um, chart of all the nominees that's in the packet, the one with the pink line across the bottom, if you could send that to those watching on Zoom, I'm gonna pass it out to all of you sitting here. Um, uh, could I call upon you, um, City Council Member Wyrick, because of the screens to pass these out? Because <laughs> it's going to be a little hard for me to get over there to Robin. Absolutely. Thank you. And there's one for you and Susan as one well. For uh, one for everyone present, one for Susan. And, and right. those on Zoom should open their email. Did you send it already, Luis? I have one. Thank you. So we need, is this the same document, Luis, that's Bill, up on Bill. the Zoom? We need to make sure this is available to the public as well, <laughs> not just by email. So is that the same document that I'm seeing on the screen now? Thank you very much, Bill. Bill, do you have one, you and Susan? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I uh, believe I heard comment from our city attorney. Uh, is that correct? Yes, thank you, Luis. So I j we... Passing it out is fine in the room, but the public has to be able to see the same information. So the fact that it was emailed is insufficient. So is the same document that was emailed and is being passed out, that's what's shown on the Zoom? Is that correct? Uh, yes, we, we will go ahead and show that on the Zoom. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Clarify, Matt. Are you asking if the present document is the same one that was sent out? Yes, that is the question. How do I do that? Oh. Uh, are you asking if the document that's on the screen is the same one that was sent out? Yep, do that. Yeah, that's the question. In other words, we the public has to be able to see the same document that, that is in the room. Oh, I see. And it sounds like it is. I am ready to go. Screen. I see. Are you ready, Luis, on your end? Yep. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Okay, All right, so you, you have a, a chart on the screen up there. Um, I think I want to see the whole picture, Luis. If you could, you enlarged it. Could you make it so with the whole thing? Yeah. Thank you. So what I wanna talk about here on this chart are the three filled slots. <clears throat> and what I'd like you to do is to look at the column immediately to the left that says Eric St. James. It's the first column going down. And you will see there Eric's um, selections for each of the categories. But they are not gonna look like what came to you in your packet. And that's what I wanna talk about. Why doesn't it look like what came to you in your packet? The reason for that is, is that um, Eric nominated Susan Amend. And Susan is involved in the pro process. And so she's um, disqualified to serve on the capacity as, uh, as Eric's representative. So she was removed. And by the way, this was discussed with Eric. Um, we just didn't do this unilaterally. Um, he was communicated with and he agreed 
Um, in fact, he selected how to change his nominations. Um, if he had not wanted to change the way he presented his initial nominations, we would have left it the way it was. It was totally up to him. Um, originally, Eric had nominated, I think, six arts professionals, and he had not nominated any community members. And so the question to Eric was, would you be okay, would you like to move a couple of your art professional nominations to the community member column? You don't have to do that, it's totally up to you, but it would make it um, easier for the um, process if you have a couple people in every category. And he said, oh, no problem at all. And he moved Lisa Cassoni from Porch Gallery and Teddy Nava of Basic Premise Gallery into that column up at the top that says community member. So I wanted to explain that. And then I want to go over to the column that says Nigel Chisholm, which is the one uh, after uh, Commissioner Steiner. And that also won't look like what's in your packet for similar reasons. Nigel nominated Joe Som, and um, I talked to Nigel and suggested that um, we might not want to include Joe. I know that the city um, has taught me over the last years that any impression of impropriety should be avoided. And since we just purchased Joe Som, and he's receiving our Lifetime Achievement in the Arts Award. We felt, <laughs> Marcy is sh pick, showing Anna you the White. <laughs> photos, but that's not on screen right now. Um, we've, we felt, or at least um, Marcy and I felt that um, it would be best not to include Joe on this jury. Also, he travels all the time. The chance of his being available was second to none. And then that meant he had no one in the artist column. So I talked to Nigel and I said, Nigel, would you like to move somebody into the artist column? And he moved two people from arts professionals into the artist column, River Savageau and John Nava or Nava. And uh, Nigel, if you will confirm that, that this was um, agreeable to you and that there was no pressure put on you to do that, that you, you saw the uh, wisdom of having s someone in each category? Yeah, the, the list as it is represents my views, no problem. Okay, thank you, Nigel. Okay, so those are the changes. Uh, the other changes have to do with um, Cassandra Jones and Jane Decknatel. This is under Commissioner Steiner's uh, column. Um, when we met, the PAC met yesterday, the Public Art Committee, um, Christine let us know that we had uh, put Cassandra and Jane, uh, we had misplaced them. So that got straightened out. Uh, so that's what happened. Now I wanna talk about um, why three slots are filled. Well, one of the picks for the jury comes from the Historic Preservation Commission. So um, I talked to Brian Aiken and Brian Aiken selected Cindy Convery for that slot. So that slot's not open. And um, a th another slot of the three filled slots is J.R. Luna or, and his representative, again, only one vote though. And then the arts commissioner. And because we're using the process that we're familiar with and that works so well, we, uh, I selected as public art chair, Marcy Tosher. She's the most familiar with the process. Uh, and Christine Steiner was asked if that would be okay. Oh, is this better? Yeah, because you were okay. making noise. Okay, thank you. Uh, Christine Steiner was asked um, if, that, if she was agreeable to Marcy serving, and she said she was. So three slots are taken. That leaves five commissioners for four picks, community member, artist, two arts professionals. Well, it just so happened that, um, and I take complete responsibility for this, um, it's my bad that I didn't anticipate that a new commissioner who wasn't familiar with the process might misinterpret the direction to nominate um, jurors. And it would, if had I thought of that, I would have said, of course, don't ask the community 
to nominate jurors. The nominations have to come from you. And um, Commissioner West, um, he, he's so wonderful the way he likes to reach out to everybody, but we couldn't accept jurors that came from other than arts commissioners. And I spoke for a long, long time with Commissioner West and explained that to him and said, you really don't have anyone, he only submitted one name anyway, um, would you be okay if in this instance you still get to you know, have a say um, on the whole thing, but would you be okay if um, you don't have names uh, this time and you wouldn't get a pick? And that way we have four commissioners, four picks. And Commissioner West, am I representing that correctly? Commissioner West, before you speak. I can't hear, what did he say? Uh, let me jump in here. I'm I sorry, recognize I I'm coming into this conversation a little later than the others. Would, would somebody tell However, me, am I hearing that? That's J Matt Summers, city attorney. I recognize I'm coming into this conversation a little later than the others. However, the genesis of the recommendations made by a commissioner does not it, render them invalid. Commissioner West can look to whoever he wishes to look to to make his recommendations. I'm right. concerned that the idea that the fact that they, they originated with the community renders them invalid is not supported by the ordinance. The ordinance allows the commission as a whole, rather requires the commission as a whole to approve the members of the public art jury. And that is different language than is in the regular public art ordinance. The regular public art ordinance simply speaks to it being selected and specifies the seven slots. This ordinance, Ohio Municipal Code section 416304, requires the public art jury to be appointed by the arts commission. So it will have to be a vote to approve the slots and nothing in there speaks to how commissioners make their recommendations. So respectfully, I think it's important that Commissioner West understand that if you wish to make recommendations rooted in the community's nominations, that's fine. No law prohibits that. Thank you. Marcy, would you give a summary of that? I couldn't hear it. Sure. He said that um, uh, the um, directive to establish a public art jury is different in the mural ordinance than the public art ordinance and that all it requires is that we approve and that it was kind of that Smitty should have been able to in any manner he wanted to nominate someone even if it was okay. just a uh, got it. call to the community give me your name all right got it all right well thank you Matt for that um, that is not the way we interpreted um, Commissioners, we felt that commissioners should select people that they know and could speak to as to why they were um, nominated. And the person he nominated, he wasn't familiar with at all. So I appreciate what you're saying. It was just, I guess, a difference in how we saw um, that if you nominated someone who you didn't even know who that person was, that um, it, it just didn't seem to ring like to be the thing to do. At any rate, I, I was Barrett, asking Commissioner, Commissioner West if he would acknowledge that, we, that he and I had a conversation and that he agreed. All right, can you all hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? He didn't, he's just asking if we can hear him. Um, yes. uh, Marcy, will translate if I can't. All right, well, thank you, Matthew, for, for, for kind of getting And I think this just points to the um, uh, uh, to the idea that we don't have a process for doing this. And so we kick it over, I guess, to the arts committee to, uh, to uh, bring forward a, uh, a slate for us to uh, vote on. Um, so at, at this point, uh, uh, I was asked three times to nominate someone and I went to the uh, Rotary Club to ask the president uh, to nominate someone that hopefully I, I knew, you know, that, that would represent uh, the community. And uh, she picked some someone and gave me their name, but I don't know them. And and when I look at this, when I look at this list here, I, you know, I, I know these people as well, and I know they're known by the uh, commissioners that nominated them. So um, it, uh, I do I do respect what you're saying, Matthew, and I agree. Uh, but I but I will I, in good conscience right now, not even knowing the person that I nominated or or their position in the uh, in the uh, in the community um and we do have their their uh, understanding of this as well so i'll stand by my withdrawal thank you scott he's okay with it 
would you say? Yes. Um, so my understanding is, Commissioner West, that uh, <coughs> for this particular slate, you're okay with the process, but recognize that at some point we need to create a process specifically. The point of order, M Madam Chair, point of order. I'm just trying to rephrase so that Christine And it's not can being hear. accurately rephrased. Well, then when I'm position. done, when I'm done, you can restate. A point of order has precedence. It. A point of order has precedence. You're overruled. <laughs> One at a time, please. Thank Point you, yes. Let me precedence. finish what I was explaining I to Christine because she can't hear. She said he said one at a time, and I'm the one. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Uh, Christine, um, he he recognizes that at some point a process has to be established. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I'll go on with the presentation. <clears throat> the point of order, Madam Chair, should be at least acknowledged. Would you agree with that, Matt? <laughs> yes. A point of order is an order. The commissioner should uh, state your point of order, and then it can be dealt with as applicable. Shall I go on with the presentation? Yes. Okay. The point um, of order was that we are talking, that we are on the clarification, on the report of the committee, which I much appreciate, and we should not go beyond that, Madam Chair. You are in charge of chairing this meeting, not telling all of us what to do or usurping our authority, <coughs> and that is the issue. Thank, Thank you for you. your opinion. Continue. Shall I go on? Yes. Okay, so let's go back to this, and again, what we're talking about is how we ended up with four slots for four commissioners. And I just want to say that this is another one where I'm going to say <clears throat> it was my bad. Uh, when I uh, was working on the mural ordinance, I used the template for the arts, public art ordinance for the makeup of the jury. And it calls for a developer to be on that jury. And because we hadn't done this ever before, I didn't process that for a mural ordinance, really the owner of the building should not be sitting on that jury. There should be a second artist. So in the future, because I intend to bring that back to the commission, and if everyone agrees, it'll go to council for, uh, to be amended so that there's two artists and the building owner is just there as a representative. It makes the most sense because obviously the building owner is going to be in favor of the mural. And that means there will always be five slots for five commissioners and no one will be left out of the process, just for future reference. So this is how it turned out that we have four slots and four commissioners. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go on now <clears throat> to the four open slots. The four open slots are one community member, <clears throat> one artist, and two art professionals. Now, another question has come up, and that is, if you want to go to the, uh, yeah, you're there. Why one pick each commissioner? Thank you. That's just where I want to be. Um, we believe that a public art jury should have many eyes. And I'm gonna divert here a little bit and just tell you a, a personal uh, take on this. And that is that when I joined the Arts Commission, lo these many 14 years ago, I would probably have to say that I was an art snob and that I really only saw what I considered to be good art through my own eyes. But I learned, I'm so grateful that I had an opportunity to learn, to see especially public art through many eyes. And one of the most telling moments for me was the Trimpen Arch. Because when I heard, when it was first installed and I heard the Trimpen Arch go off, I was like, whoa, what's that? Who picked that? But one day when I was over there, there was a seven-year-old girl, and she was standing under the arch, and she was twirling around. And her mother was standing there, and her mother told me that she goes up and down the, the hill, 
until her clothes get full of static. And then she runs as fast as she can to the arch and she begins to spin. And the look on her face was of pure joy. And it forever changed my opinion about the sound of that arch. It widened my eyes. I'm much less of an art snob now. And that's why one pick for each commissioner. By the way, that little girl thought that she was making the arch go off from the static in her clothes. She didn't realize it was motion activated. <laughs> I love that story. <clears throat> but there are other instances of this too where I have seen the delight that people have in a piece of public art that is not my favorite or maybe I would say when I look at it doesn't do anything for me and I think that the jury needs to have eyes like that they need the jury needs to be represented by a wide swath of Ojai and what Ojai represents and by having each commissioner pick one of the jurors that is accomplished. So that's the reason why one pick each commissioner. Then, why recommend a slate? <clears throat> well, we recommend a slate for efficiency. If we don't recommend a slate to you, and along with that recommendation comes that you give us freedom that if someone is not available to go to the next pick under that commissioner's name, we're going to be at this until October or November. So it's efficient for us to come to you and say, this is where we'd like to start. This is what the Public Art Committee came up with as a great way to call these four people one under each commissioner's name. <clears throat> so expediency. And then I think I've already, if you want to go on uh, up there, I'm kind of not going in total order here. So again, there's an unpredictability of the process when it comes to alternates. And this is why I believe that you, I hope, as commissioners, trust your public art uh, committee that we only have the best interest of the public at heart here. We want to pick a well-balanced jury. And really the way, I know, Matt uh, Summers, that you interpret it differently, but the way, you know, I had a hand in writing it, and the way I interpret it was that the, the um, input from the commission was in giving the nominees to us and then trusting that we're going to um, have everyone represented. So I know that's a disagreement. And that's, that's okay. Um, because, you know, it's going to go to a vote, and if people disagree, then, you know, we'll see what happens next. So the next slide, and again, we're going to pass this out. Bill, you want to help again? And while we're passing out this, which is the recommended slate, we're going to have that go on Zoom. Luis is going to send that to all you Zoomers. And this is called the recommended slate. Thank you, Bill. How are we doing with the Zoomers? They got it. OK, great. It's up there. All Thank right, you. so Zoomers, if you want to open that up, or you can look at it on your screen, you'll see that in the left hand, the far left hand column, if you read straight down, you'll see the seven, what I would call <clears throat> the starting slate that we're recommending uh, today for you to give permission to the Public Art Committee to start the process once we get a date from Mr. Luna to start the process of calling to see who's available and willing to serve. And then if that person, let's say for example, Teddy Nava is not available, then we would drop down and call Lisa Cassoni. Let us say that um, Cassandra Jones, who is the art, artist pick, is not available. Then we would call Robin Gerber and say, Robin, Cassandra's not available. Do you have another name that you would like to give uh, for that slot and so on so if a second name isn't listed that's okay because we'll ask that commissioner if they would like to give an alternate name for the pick so that's basically what we're asking um, today in the recommendation and the motion that I'm going to make is that you give the public art committee uh, the ability to go forward and make this happen as soon as possible for Ojai imports and in an efficient manner.
and that you trust us that we're going to do this evenly and fairly and create a public art jury with what I call many eyes. So I'm just going to review who the public art jury might be if all these people are available. And that would be the community member, Teddy Nava. The artist, Cassandra Jones. Art professionals, there's two of those. Elizabeth Herring, Ray Powers. Historic Preservation Commission, Cindy Convery. Ojai Imports, J.R. Luna. Arts Commissioner, Marcy Tosher. Those are the seven jurors that we're asking you to give us permission to uh, get back to work and to make this happen. And then of course you know, and I think it's so important uh, because so many of you are new, that the jury only makes a recommendation to the commission. And the commission votes whether or not to accept the recommendation of the jury. So ultimately, you all, the seven arts commissioners, have the final say in this. And after the jury deliberates, um, uh, JR, uh, maybe Susan, and Marcy, because she's on the jury, would make a presentation to the Arts Commission so that um, we see fully and understand and can listen to why the jury made the recommendation that they did. So I'm going to make them. Oh, I'm sorry. To have well, first, I thank you. Questions. Thank you, Commissioner Golden. I want thank you, everyone, for listening. Ask if anyone has any clarifying questions for Commissioner Golden. Um, I would raise another point of order first since we have Matt here and I'm curious about his take on this. Um, now, now that we've heard the, pr the process that was made up to do this, um, clearly it circumscribes our authority as commissioners to have a full discussion. I didn't know if there might only have been four people nominated and then there wouldn't be anything to discuss, but clearly there were more. Um, and the ordinance says that the Arts Commission appoints the jury, and the commission has not created a process for that that we've all agreed on in this case, as we heard. And so it seems to me that this does violate the ordinance and that the best thing to do <laughs> Uh, because we cannot discuss all of the other nominees at this meeting because of what I would say is a flaw in the agenda. We are re required to only vote this up or down with no discretion and no ability to discuss the others. Um, that really, and I know, Matt, this is another motion, <laughs> that we could just put this off for a few days and have a, an open agenda item and be able to have a discussion which I trust my other commissioners that we could all do this very expeditiously um, by consensus. So, Matt, I just I just like your opinion on that. You're here, right? I am. So the okay. question off, should have been directed. A it's clarifying a point question of order, which has precedence. Matt, point let me order. answer the question if I may. The chair First decides. Off, the item today is legal and is lawful. There is no violation of the Brown Act nor any agenda problem. And I'll explain why. The agenda states, subject, Ojai Valley Imports mural project, recommendation that the commission receive and, upset and accept or deny the public art committee's recommendation for the public art jury of the Ojai Valley Imports mural project and gives the address. Inherent in every opportunity to accept or deny is also modified. And there's case law that supports that conclusion. So in this case, the arts commission is asked to accept the recommendation as laid out by Commissioner Golden from the Public Art Committee for who will compose the Public Art Jury for this project, deny it or modify it. Also always on the table is continuance and continuance is of course a valid option should the commission majority so support. Um, second is the recommendation from the Public Arts Committee for how the Public Art Jury should be formed does not violate law and it does not take away the commission's discretion. It is simply that, a recommendation. The Public Art Committee has made the recommendation that the, that the public art jury be structured as shown up on the, at least on my screen, in the table, the column on the far left in red, those seven members. That comes to this commission as a choice. It can be accepted, rejected, or modified. 
Further, the fact that this recommendation was built out of the public art committee process in the way explained by Commissioner Golden is perfectly lawful. Nothing in the ordinance prohibits any particular method. Nothing in the ordinance requires any particular selection method. If the majority of the Arts Commission supports this approach, a motion and a second and a vote could be held. If the majority of the Arts Commission does not support this process, that's okay too. And it would be a motion and a second and a vote either for an alternative slate or a vote for a different process and then to come back next time with a different recommendation or a different uh, process. So all options are on the table. Okay. And it's a matter of where the commission majority may lie or a consensus. Thank you, Matt Summers. And I have a point of order for the chair. Well, can I just um, finish? Chair, uh, I just excuse me, finish? I'm speaking. Chair, chair Tosher, is not this section according to the rules of order to be clarification questions Clarify about questions the presentation. presentation okay I just wanted to be sure I understood right. you right. understand but a so point of order has to, precedence uh, I would like to ask Matt a question to clarify what he just said you could it's ask, questions to the presenter Matt, right now not to, so Matt yeah. you are saying we can discuss all of the if we choose all of the nominees and the agenda as it's agendized doesn't prevent that. And if that's the case, I want to apologize to you, Louise. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Thank this you. Discuss all nominees. Thank you very much, ma'am. No, you have to ask everyone. All right. Are those all of the clarifying questions? Uh, no, I have a I have a clarifying question and a clarifying concern. So Commissioner Golden has explained uh, consistently we, the Public Art Committee, did uh, a variety of, of things. I want to be on the record as saying that I am on that committee, that I did not agree that at the outset I asked, at the outset of the committee meeting, which was held yesterday, I asked a clarifying question because I disagreed with the process. The process clearly was borrowing for this, mur this new mural ordinance, a process that had been put in place for an earlier process. The city attorney has clarified that that is not necessarily correct. It is something the commission can agree to do, but the commission has not yet agreed to do so. The chair at that point threateningly wagged her finger at me and said, and I quote, we're not going to do it any other way, unquote. And I state again that the process was flawed, that it takes away authority from the commissioners, and that it borrows a process without direction of this commission. Um, Matt? Uh, um, maybe uh, questions from the Zoomers? Okay. okay uh, I, I have a clear. Are there any questions? Let's give them a chance. Uh, okay. Anyone on Zoom have a clarifying question for Commissioner, Commissioner Chisholm Golden? has his hand up. Nigel, you're muted. Who's speaking? Nigel, I think, has a question. Uh, just a clarifying question for Matt. Matt, in order for everybody to discuss. Excuse me, Nigel. Oh, is it possible to put Nigel's picture up there? Thank you. Can you turn up the volume? I'll start again. Matt, oh. can you hear me okay? Yes. Can everybody hear me okay? All right. Matt, in order to put everybody's name on uh, to be discussed, there has to be a motion to that effect. Is that correct? Currently, there is no motion to that effect. No, it doesn't. We wouldn't need a motion. The, the item is before the commission in full, so we can discuss um, any of the options. Obviously, a motion will be needed at some point to debate on the motion. But yeah, all names are on the table at this point. Thank you. Anyone else Smitty. out there? And Smitty. Smitty, do you have a question? Um, about the, uh, the, the, about the presentation. Oh, uh, no, I got like a big statement, but I'll just wait till there's a motion. OK. OK. All right. So I had a, um, uh, everyone's had an opportunity to ask a question or I two. I have a couple or three. other clarifying questions, Marcy. Uh, what are they? Are they repetitive? I guess you'll see. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to clarify. One thing we haven't heard about is, because I really am confused about this project. I asked several times. Does it help if I talk louder? Oh, yeah. Okay. 
I um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. My husband has an issue too. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm getting hearing aids. So right. I'm getting the test next week. Yeah. Well, wait a few months. It'll be free under um, the new Medicare rules. Oh, God. Um, tell me that. Biden has included it. Oh, all right. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, my question was um, this is what happens when you get old. You forget your questions. Yeah, I got uh, that too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. The. Um, a couple of things. So, so what was, what the first question I have is, and I asked several, our chair several times to answer this, what, how did this bubble up? Because I I've just took my car to Ohio Imports. There's already, th this has already started. Could we have some clarification about how we got to this point? Okay, I'm okay. happy to answer that. Thank you, Robin, for asking that question. Okay, so um, uh, I, someone sent me a, uh, um, a copy of a Facebook posting back in May uh, that was uh, J.R. Luna, the owner of OI Imports, saying that he wanted to do a mural. So I jumped on my pony and took a copy of the mural ordinance over to him. This was in early May and introduced myself and said, we have a mural ordinance and there's a process and you need to do this before you start any th work at all. That didn't happen. He went ahead with the project. He was working with Gail Childress, who was not familiar. She was, you know, a arts commissioner at one point and really didn't realize there was a mural ordinance. And JR is a business owner, you know. I, 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 f I find no fault that he wasn't tracking this. And Gail just was so excited, and they began underpaintings. And then, doggone it, I get another text from somebody with a picture of um, one of the five artists having already um, blocked in one of the doors. So um, I jumped on my pony, and uh, Luis jumped on his, and we went over together. And we talked to JR and said, you know, you're going to get a stop order from the city. You can't continue with this until you complete the mural process. And it was a very lovely conversation. He's quite a lovely man with a, just a terrific big heart. Uh, I'm sorry, when was that? Huh? When, when was that? Oh, when was that? That was, uh, Luis, help me out here. Was that like um, Ju May, June, the last week of June? Yeah, the last week of June. Last week of June. So we thought we're good for the go, that he understood the process. And at that point, he told uh, both of us that um, Gail Childress was running the um, process. And so I sent an email to Gail uh, and gave her all the details and offered to meet with her and you know make sure that she understood what documents had to go in the application packet and so on. Um, but Gail... Um, when, uh, and, and got her a copy of the mural ordinance. So she read the mural ordinance and she misread it. And she decided on her own that because a mural had been on the building previously, that um, Ojai Imports was exempt. And so um, she did not pass the word along to the other artists that they had to cease and desist. Neither did JR. And um, I got sent a third text with a picture of Christine Bierne, one of the artists, Christine Apostolino Bierne, um, in the process of painting another door on the mural, and I called Christine. Well, I, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt, but how, so how did you resolve the question of whether this might in fact have been grandfathered in? Uh, oh, well, because um, did Matt get cause it's written, because it's written in the mural ordinance. I explained it to Christine. She understood it. She used to be on the commission, too, Christine. So I explained to Christine that, indeed, um, uh, it was a misread and the mural ordinance. Is it, did uh, um, just to clarify, is the, so the mural ordinance, if there's an existing mural, does it address painting over an existing um, Let me read that mural? part to you for everybody else. I'll okay. read it to you. Section 416.308, existing murals. Replacement of an existing mural. This is what is pertinent. They were replacing an existing mural. Uh, 
A new mural may not be installed on the site where the deteriorated mural was removed without applying to the Arts Commission in accordance okay. with this mural ordinance. So she just misunderstood. Okay. And that happens. That's okay. And Christine was lovely to talk to, and she told me that she would help me get the word out to all the other artists that they really had to stop until this process was complete. Then at that point, I got um, a contact from Susan Amen, and uh, Sinsmuel and Amen, and uh, she told me that she was going to fill in for Gail and take over at that point. And I believe, Susan, that you got a copy of the mural ordinance and that you know everything at that point started to go in the correct order. And that's how we got to where we are today. We have a mural that many of the doors have already been blocked in. And we really would like to have this jury meet. And uh, I, the paint is there. I suggested to JR that he put it in a freezer, because if you put paint in a freezer, it will not dry out. So I suggested that to him. But you know, I don't know that that information went on. And they're really concerned, because they, the paint is there, that they, want, they, they really want to get going on it. And again, I really see that as my role, is to accommodate a business owner, someone who is contributing to the tax base, and who I think city council would expect us to do what we can to move it along. So does that answer your question? Yes, and I, I certainly agree with you that we want to help our businesses as much as we can. Yeah, thank uh, you. The council members here know how I feel about that. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, and, and one other question I had is, Smitty said that he had... Um, you had talked to him about outreach to the community, which of course would be something I would absolutely totally support to try and get other ideas. Doesn't mean he was going to nominate them, I assume. But wh but what was what was the nature of the outreach? Oh, um, I, uh, I don't know if I've been clear then on that. Uh, there's fine to uh, do an outreach, but it's different if you don't even know the person. It was social you media. Have no, uh, you have no background at all on who that person is. You don't even know what they look like. You couldn't write something. You know, we asked all of you to give a few sentences about the artist. He asked someone else to make the nomination for him. Now, I understand Matt Summers doesn't agree with uh, the take that I have, that, that we really would like the nominees to come directly from commissioners. But certainly, it's OK to um, talk to people that you know. And reach. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're asking, uh, Robin? Uh, you know, I guess what I'm saying is that we, you know, we want to have as broad an outreach as possible. I'm, I think it's not being beyond Smitty's capability or anyone to get some names and then talk to the people and you know right. well, that's familiarize himself of course right. and I, I think this just all goes to having a process that with all respect to you um, Commissioner and all the work that you've done uh -huh. that needs to be decided by the whole commission so we and we can yeah. talk and I then, agree with you and then we can talk about things yeah. like this I, yeah. I agree with you I think that um, for the next project coming along that we should clarify and agree among ourselves just uh, what does that mean community outreach and does, does it mean that we can ask someone else to nominate for us that's what he did he asked someone else to nominate for him he didn't make the nomination he even wrote in the sheet that it was a nomination by um, the uh, some no, no, from I, Rotary Club. So we can talk about that, and whatever the majority decides, I'm fine with that. Yeah, um, okay. We were just going with um, again past practice that worked. So um, you know, it's right. up to and the I, commission I to decide that. that. I know I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. You know, it's just to operate as a professional commission, which I know we all want to do. Mm -hmm. That we need to have processes that the commission actually votes on and agrees to, as we did with the paint box project. So I think that's that's the only thing at issue here is yeah. that uh, you know we need to do this as a commission because we all have equal authority as commissioners. Yeah, yeah. Well, we agree, Robin, on that, and you know we will attend to that. Uh, it didn't come up with the other one, but it came up this time. It's a good thing it came up because now we can clarify it. All right. So. It is what it is. So, um, are there any other clarifying? Oh, I should. Yes, I. Uh, I'm sorry. I have an additional clarifying question. So, on the chart that was handed out, um, if you could put that back on again, Luis, please, so all can see it. And again, while Luis is doing that, I would emphasize that I disagreed with the process 
So this is not a unanimous recommendation from the Public Art Committee, and I think it's important to underscore that. Nevertheless, with respect to the chart, so Luis, it's, it's the other one Christine put on. The one with the pink line, Christine? That's correct. It appears as well in the chart Luis just had on, but I think it's better uh, viewed here. <coughs> so the clarification is that under my name, Elizabeth Herring appears with a description that was borrowed from the, the uh, explanation from Eric St. James. In fact, when I submitted my nominations within the appropriate time, I said for Elizabeth Herring under arts professional, I stated curator, semicolon, author slash art critic, semicolon, operates digital gallery and coordinates public critique art events, semicolon, former gallery assistant employed by internationally prominent New York gallery, semicolon, formerly organized arts events in New York and Berlin. The reason this is significant, and I would ask that it be clarified, is for the very reason that our city attorney stated that all names are on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, I think we're ready to move on um, and continue with public comment relating to this agenda item. Is there anyone here that would like to present a public comment? Uh, and, uh, Susan? Yeah, yes, shall I go over here? Sure, yeah, they'll need to hear you on the mic. Um, gosh, uh, Susan Stinsmuel and Amond, I live uh, outside of the city limits. I served on the Arts Commission for 14 years. I helped with, the, with several other uh, commissioners write the first public arts ordinance approved in 2003 and revised in 2008. And this is the first time I've really been, I stepped down in 14 and I really haven't dove into this because why would I want to? But I do care. Uh, so that's, uh, um, so, in terms of process, am, am I allowed to speak to that? Sure. Yeah. yeah. It seems like it's become hugely complicated for, for no reason. Um, we had, when we set up the ordinance, we set up a group called CAPA, a Committee to Approve Public Art, um, that's an ad hoc committee. There were, there would be, um, an arts professional chosen by the commission. There would be an arts professional, and wh who else is on that? There's uh, an arts professional, and and this uh, Barbara Hirsch is serving yeah, currently, a member of the planning commission, uh, right. which will be a new person the next time Kappa meets, and then three, the three members of the uh, public, of the public art, art, committee, art committee, or they don't have to be members of the well, public art committee. Well, that's what we had written. I said right. that we were assuming that if they were on the public art committee, they would know the most about public art. That is not always going to be the case. When we were, we had a, three really strong people in public art, and that's why we were able to actually write something from our experience. And anyway, so it's going to change all the time uh, who is on the Arts Commission and what faction of our community or of the arts they represent. And that's all good, but it can get clogged up. So Kappa was chosen uh, as a ad hoc committee that would change with like I think two years. We agreed to this, but CAPA was brought because the city was not anxious for uh, or was anxious about uh, private developers uh, getting bogged down with the requirements of the public art ordinance. So we, we kind of evolved this g committee so that the, the uh, private developers could present their project through an arts consultant or by themselves or whomever was their rep, to CAPA. CAPA would l review it, recommend yay or nay to back to the Arts Commission. So it was pretty streamlined. 
And they were, we were assuming there that those people had the knowledge and wisdom to make a choice. Um, in, so that was for private development. If, if there were a case where the private development were, say, like the movie theater decided they were going to put a mural on the side of that building, the Arts Commission would take the next step and call a public public art jury because, well, actually a public public art jury is called when the city or the government initiates a public art process because they represent everybody in the community and they need to be accountable to the community to have a public art jury. Like you're calling for this mural project, it's unnecessary. What, because, for, because it's a small project, um, I mean, I know that I've read the, um, the mural ordinance, which I didn't know existed, and I see that it calls for a public art jury, and that requires a process similar to what is happening now. Um, but not exactly. Um, so in terms of, uh, and also, you know, because we all live in Ojai, we make accommodations based on our experience and the people we know, and sure, we can look at all of these, but let's, let's modify it a bit and speed it up, speed it up by doing a kappa, by just having this quick look at it, and, um, because in this case, yes, through missteps has already started, and also because he chose a professional artist group to be the people that submitted for his project, we can be assured it's going to be moderately good, pretty good. It looks good already. Um, the other thing I noticed is that it looks like when he applied, um, when he came to the city, um, he... Uh, it became apparent that he was going to be painting the building and he was painting over murals. And the community development manager approved the application. In your ordinance, it says that if they're going to paint over an old mural, then it needs to come to the Arts Commission, which it did not do. So I don't, that's a little mis, misstep, it seems to me. But, you know, I'm, now I'm micromanaging when I'm trying to be more generous in general. Um, the other thing about... <coughs> about committee, about the jury process is that, again, it's, um, you, you could have a meeting where everybody would nominate names in the categories as you've done and just have like a standing list of artist professionals, artists, community members, and the, uh, the public art subcommittee could choose from those to, um, and then just say, this is what we've done from, you know, the input that you've given us, we've chosen these people for this project. Um, the other thing about the, um, the, the community member, the community member doesn't have to know anything about art, but should know about the community. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's something to, you know, like reaching out to, uh, what, Rotary, is that where Schmidty West went? Was it Rotary? That any, that's that okay. seems like a good idea because then business owners are like, oh, hey, what's happening in our community? And they learn about public art through that process. Um, so um, I think that's um, I think that's all. And I will say that I don't know if this. I would the next thing would be that I am representing because Gail Childress left town <laughs> and I helped her at the beginning come up with an idea, then she said, okay, well, would you take over? And I didn't know, you know, uh, anyway. So um, I will say that uh, there was a refreshing uh, camaraderie between the owner and, the, and Gail and the artists about, yeah, let's do this. And so it was, uh, yeah. it was charming and delightful. And then also that the, scholarship component that's super that's super yeah, cool yeah, that's yeah. giving back and caring about the future of the artists and the, so thank you that's all for now thank you thank you um at this point i uh invite a motion by commissioner okay. golden thank you um and i just want to say thank you susan and i've taken notes on your suggestions i think they're right on we can talk I, yeah. and, Oh, oh, let's let's definitely talk. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, 
I, I remember that I for detail. <laughs> I learned from you. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make a motion now. Um, I move to approve the recommended slate of public art jurors for the Ojai Imports Mural Project and for the Arts Commission Liaison Luis Gomez and the public art chair, Golden, to select alternates if needed for unavailable jurors. Second. With that, we will have a roll call. Uh, may, may, did we get a second? We have discussion. Uh, uh, it has to be sorry. discussion. So, I apologize. I, I thought you were the second. Did My apologies. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Oh, I, I apologize. I misunderstood. I think, Marcy, uh, you're going to read the motion. As, uh, okay. as, her, yeah. as indicating yeah. her as second. So I have a second. Yes, please read it again. Sure. The motion is I Excuse move me a minute. Louis, do you, can you put it up on the screen? Did I send it to you in digital form? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Here, so Christine. Christine, would you like a copy? The I'll, I'll wait. No, because I think Louis should read it. Okay, but I thought if you wanted a copy. Okay, sure. no problem. The, the motion is I, uh, Commissioner Golden moved to recommend the slate of the public art jurors for the Ojai Imports Mural Project and for the Arts Commission uh, liaison Luis Gomez and the public art chair to select alternates if needed for unavailable jurors. Of the public art jurors for the Ojai Imports Mural Project and for the Arts Commission Liaison Luis Gomez and the Public Art Chair Golden uh, to select alternates if needed for unavailable jurors. Does everyone understand the motion? All right. Is there a second? I'm going to take a second. I'll second it. Second. Okay. So with that, we'll go to roll call. I, th I think there's discussion before the vote. My apologies. And if I could offer one further suggestion, um, I would recommend a slight modification of the motion, uh, namely that uh, Luis's role would be a scheduling and coordination, not decision making. Staff is n never makes decisions of this caliber. It would be uh, I, Matt, are you, I want to make sure I heard you. Are you suggesting that Louise should not be named in the motion? No. Correct. What would you well, tell uh, With a different role, with the role his intended role would be to make phone not calls. Decision. Mm -hmm. and not decide um, who I the alternates are. Okay, I, I will tell you, I included Louise uh, because I thought, given that there seemed to be some question about the integrity of this process, that I would make those phone calls from his office. But I'm happy to amend the motion and take Luis off of there, if that helps. Matt? That would make it more clean. Uh, it's important that staff not make these kinds of decisions that are interesting. Okay. So I'm going to amend. Can I do that? I can amend the motion? Okay. Yes. Um, and then if the seconder agrees gonna re -read, the I'm going to reread the amended motion then. I withdraw the first motion. This is the amended motion. Okay. I move to approve the recommended slate of public art jurors for the Ojai Imports Mural Project and for the public art chair, Golden, to select alternates if needed for unavailable jurors. Now that would have to get seconded, I think, huh? I agree. Motion, Marcy. Yes, do we have a second? That's Nigel. And I agree to the amendment. And now discussion. All right. Now we'll have discussion about the amended motion. Discussion and clarification. When when this motion refers to slate, I simply want to clarify that. And Luis, would you put it on the screen, please? Sure. I I cannot hear Chris the the person speaking. I pardon me. I I'm still getting used to this process. I I apologize. My microphone is on now. Uh, the question I asked is in the motion, where it states to approve the recommended slate. I'm simply asking whether what I'm holding up, which Luis is going to be putting on the screen, yes, ma'am, is in fact the recommended slate. Yes, ma'am. That is the recommended slate. Thank you. Well, let's wait for Louise to get it up. And that's that's a great clarification, Christine. Does everybody understand that the recommended slate 
are the seven names listed in red that are on the screen right now. And that um, we're also asking for permission, a free hand in dropping down and selecting an alternate if up the person on that list is not available. I hope that helps clarify it. It, it, helps, cl it helps clarify in part. However, uh, the, again, the qualification description under Elizabeth Herring is incorrect. It should read that she is a curator. Point of order, point of order Chair Tosh. Author yes. slash yes, Nigel. critic. Uh, Nigel. There is a motion on the floor. Yes, we need to, uh, that's not, that's not, are you, are you proposing an amendment? Uh, well, I'm, I'm just suggesting a clarification, but as long as the, You've made the that clarification slate, regarding the, um, Perfect, uh, regarding the other, as long as, it's, as long as it's clear to all. Yes, you, you okay. went through it earlier. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Christine. I'd like to have, to discuss the motion. Uh, thanks, first of all. Christine, I, I totally recognize all the work you've put into this. And, you know, as I said earlier, we just need, and you agree, mm -hmm. that we as a commission need to have a process for this. But we didn't in this case. And the reason it distresses me is not the people who were picked, but the people we haven't gotten to discuss. And, you know, and all, and per, 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 sorry, Nigel? Point, point of order. We're discussing the motion, not the process. <laughs> Thank you, Nigel. I am discussing the motion. You're discussing process. Um, I would, uh, well, I don't know if we need to call him mad about I this, agree. but I agree. this is. Um, if I could jump in briefly, I understand. I am getting to, to my point about the motion. Uh -huh. um, I expect and the duty of the chair least. is to ensure the equal opportunity for all members of the commission right. to be able to speak rather than circumscribe that. In this case, as I was saying, I am very interested in my fellow commissioners' uh, nominees. And I think, I, and I would like to learn more about them for the purpose of determining whether I think this is the best slate or not because as a commissioner and without a process where we have voted to give the public art committee the um, authority to do this, Point I think order, we Chair all Tasha. have the Listen process again. Yeah, again, Nigel, the point here is to allow all of us to have our say on the motion. Order, Chair Tasha. I'm explaining why I would like to get to an amendment of the motion. Well, and so, I'd like to. I'd also like to know who it was that Smitty was proposing, um, and, but particularly, I'd like to hear about the others and why. And I'd like the chance to speak myself about the people I proposed who were not picked. And I think this would help us both for uh, this process, but also for future uh, times when we will need to do this. So I would make what I would call a friendly amendment that we um, have a discussion about all of the nominees before finally determining whether or not to uh, accept this current slate or not. Commissioner Golden, do you agree to that friendly amendment? Uh, no, I, I don't. I think at this point we should move forward with the motion as I presented it. I don't accept the amendment. I, thank you, Robin, for your friendly suggestion. I think that for the next time this comes up, that we will have a full hearty discussion around the table as to what the process should be. But I think we need to move this along. Um, and this is a slate that um, uh, it, it, there, there aren't any losers on the, uh, that, that were nominated. They're absolutely fabulous. I will tell you that um, Smitty did not make a nomination. The nomination was made by the chair of Rotary. And Smitty didn't even know that person. And it was only one nomination he made for an artist. And um, uh, he agreed and is okay with his not having a say with that one person this time. He knows that he's going to be able to vote now 
on whether or not to accept the slate and let the process move forward. So thank you, but I don't accept the, the amendment. Okay, well, then I will make an amendment and we can vote on it. And it is simply that we not accept this slate, but rather have a full discussion as a commission. And I truly believe we can come to consensus with the um, recommendations in mind, which I think are fine. And, you know, I would just invite my fellow commissioners to think about the idea of us working as a team and having a full and open discussion. And the um, tendency here, frankly, which feels like a bit of bullying, which I think the city is rather frowns on, as does our, do our schools, but I, I really don't see the point of trying to uh, push this through without just having a full discussion. We're here now, not proposing to delay this, uh, although I do feel it was rushed. But, um, you know, acting in an autocratic way in this commission, uh, frankly, makes no sense to me. It certainly doesn't look good to the public. And I have, you know, I really want this commission to have a better reputation and a better standing with the public. I think we do that by having a full discussion. So my amendment is that we have a full discussion about all the nominees and then determine our slate from that. I'm going to privilege that. the personal innuendo is uh, uh, uncalled for, Commissioner Gerber. Thank you. I didn't make it personal, but okay. Yes, you did. Uh, and, and inaccurate as well. Let's call the question. <laughs> okay, I call the question. Uh, no, it's not time to call the question. There's an I've made an amendment. I didn't hear what is what is I it? I made an emotion rather. Just a new vote, and uh, we have to first vote on the motion. I don't even. First, know we have to is. vote on the motion on the floor oh, before sure. you want to make a new no. motion. You want to substitute? I'm motion? sorry. Who is the chair of the meeting? Matt, go ahead. Commissioners, we are operating in Ohio under Rosenberg's rules of order, so we have a motion and a second on the table. That is to approve the slate. A substitute motion has been made by Commissioner Gerber that would reject the slate and go back to the commission for a, quote, full discussion. That substitute motion is now on the table. However, it requires a second. If there is no second, it dies. If there is a second, then it is voted on first as a substitute motion. It's a substitute motion, not an amendment, because uh, it, changes the, it, it changes the entire purpose of the main motion. So, I don't know if there's a second. I didn't hear one. I Although second I the substantive motion. Okay, so we've all right. Asked. Discussion. Would, we, would you somebody please repeat Robin's motion? I can if Louis. I can. Yes, so please. Uh, Louis, go ahead. If got no, it. I'm. I'm sorry, uh, Matt. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't have that that motion. Um, third. So as I understood so I the motion by. Uh, Commissioner Gerber, it is to reject the slate as proposed and return the matter to the commission to have a uh, further full discussion regarding all nominees. And so I, but I haven't heard a second yet. I Sorry, Matt, you didn't hear me. I said that I had seconded that substantive motion. Okay, thank you. So there is a second. All right, so then that's in order. Um, and it would be. Matt, now. do we now have an opportunity to discuss? Yeah, n now is that opportunity. Now that motion before we vote? Yes. Okay. Do we have any, do we have Commissioner discussion? Commissioner West is raised his comment? hand. We have uh, Commissioner West. Uh, Commissioner West, if you unmute I don't yourself. Know if anyone can hear yeah, thank you. Smitty's um, talking now. As a member of the public, this is absolutely government at its very worst. Um, you know, I Matthew, you taught me. I learned this stuff just a couple of weeks ago because I'm the new guy, so I'm the freshest Brown Act guy. And and with what my understanding is, the 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 public does not yield their sovereignty to uh, the the people that they choose to make their decisions. Are us bureaucrats or the um, or and um, it's uh, it's ridiculous. We're we're the Arts Commission. We're supposed to encourage art. Here's a, here's a citizen that wants to do something. And I can tell it's beautiful. Uh, I see these names, they're nominated, they're beautiful. 
Uh, our process, Christine, obviously sucks because we're not able to move smoothly ahead and 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 let the people, you know, you know, have their wishes. Uh, maybe this was a good process. You know, it, it sounds like a legal process from what Matthew says. We could do whatever we want. We could choose that our process is, is uh, oh, we just let Christine decide or let the Public Arts Committee decide. You know, I, I, I could see that working. It doesn't seem like that's going to work with the commission that, the way we have it right now. So, yes, Robin, you're right. We need very uh, specific process with how to do this. But I think what trumps all of this is the fact that, that we have uh, citizens out there, taxpayers, art lovers who are doing this beautiful thing. And, and they have to, they have to uh, it's embarrassing that we have to, uh, uh, that we turn it into arguing over asterisks and slashes and everything to, uh, to make the decision. So I'm, you know, I'll, 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 I, I, I'm gonna vote with, uh, with the uh, Ohio Valley Imports here, anything I could do to get, uh, uh, the, these beautiful volunteer uh, uh, jurors, you know, moving ahead with making our, our city beautiful again. Thank you. Further discussion? Uh, just to clarify, this is, you know, Smitty, thanks. And I totally agree with you. All I'm asking is we have a discussion of all the nominees. I think it would help us going forward as a commission to have that discussion and to hear from Nigel and Christine and others on the people who they have nominated, who I don't know. I mean, I'm only been on the commission a year, and I'm a playwright and an author, so I don't know all of these artists. So I'm asking is that we have that discussion. That's the point of the motion. We can then, you know, move the same slate that has been proposed. It's not the slate that I have a problem with. It's the process that has not given us a chance to hear from each other and to speak as a commission. And frankly, I think that that is the duty, particularly of the leadership of the commission, to encourage us to have a full discussion. So that's all this motion is about. All right, you want to read the motion, Louise, and then we'll vote. No, uh, no, May, I think May. you have to I, ask for a discussion from everybody. I think everybody. we're still on discussion, yes? Oh, I didn't know you had a... Yes. Okay, Commissioner well, have, Steiner. Thank you. I have simply a, a quick point, which is that... Uh, I agree with this motion because process is important. I agree with what Robin Gerber said. We may ultimately agree that these are appropriate nominees. But this is a new mural ordinance. It was passed under a new process with a new purpose. And I think it's correct that the commission has the authority on behalf of the community to fully vet the nominees for this jury. It's especially important when it comes to murals, and likely it's the reason there's a different sort of process in the mural ordinance than in the general public art ordinance. And that is because murals are very visible. They are of the people, for the people, about the people, and they are probably the clearest example of public art that exists, and we have a duty to appropriately represent the art and to bring people into this process who can generally vet it in support of, of this duty. Thank you. Any more discussion? Ask Nigel. Nigel? Did Nigel? Yes, I've got nothing more to add than what's already been said. Okay. Then I uh, will. Me, can I make can call me? Yes, of course. Uh, I, I just want to say, and I appreciate uh, what you're both saying about the process. And again, I think that when we have a new, another mural project come our way, that we should have a full discussion about this. But I will tell you that historically, uh, the commission has not debated the merits of nominees. Uh, that we have all felt that anyone who's been nominated, there's a little bio by each one, is a worthy individual to serve on this jury. I am thrilled to death with the nominees that came in. I just don't think it's necessary to extend this meeting and have this discussion. So I hear you, Robin. I hear you, Christine. Thank you, Smitty. I think I also would vote in favor of let's move this along for Ojai Imports. You know, we've been at it an hour and a half already. And um, that's, that's my only comment. Okay. All right. I think, uh, do you want to repeat the substitute motion? Sure. Luis. 
and then sure. we'll have a roll call. Absolutely. And uh, Matt, if, if I may, I think you said it very eloquently the first time around. Would you be so kind to repeat? Sure. So the first vote will be the substitute motion, which would reject the slate recommended by COPPA and have a full discussion, re all nominations. Uh, that vote, if it succeeds, will be the decision of the commission. If that motion, substitute motion fails, then we will vote on the main motion, which is to approve the slate recommended by COPPA and provide direction to the COPPA chair to select alternates as needed. So first vote would be on the substitute motion. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll uh, through the chair, invite a roll call. Matt, uh, I do believe there's a point of clarification, which is that it's not COPPA, it's Public Art Committee. Ah, thank you. I'm, I'm being too quick in my acronyms. That's correct. Roll call, please, Luis. So with that, we'll go ahead and begin with uh, Chair Steiner. Uh, Commissioner uh, Golden? No. Commissioner uh, Chisholm? No. Commissioner West? Nay. No. Commissioner Gerber? Yes. Commis uh, Chair Tosher? No. Motion fails. Now you have to, you have to say that. To vote it. Now would be probably to vote on the main motion unless there's further discussion, but I believe all points may have been had. The In motion is uh, defeated um, by uh, a vote of four to two with Commissioner Steiner and Commissioner Gerber dissenting. All right, yeah, I think. So. And, and, and Commissioner West. No, he's, he, he denied the motion. He voted no. He said nay. Okay. I heard nay okay. as well. Okay, Matt, do I now uh, state my motion that, that I originally yes. had on the table? Is that the correct procedure? That would be correct. Restate the main motion, and then it'd be appropriate for a vote on the main motion. Okay, we're back. Right, we're back to yes. Say? We're okay. back to the main motion. Can okay. we, uh, Louise? Right, can so you repeat the motion again? Uh, you don't the want me to motion. read it. You want Louise to read it? Yes. Okay. Okay. So the main motion was that um, Commissioner Golden um, she moved forward to recommend the slate of the public art jurors for the Ojai Import Mural Project, and um, that the public art chair, uh, Commissioner Golden, uh, to select alternates if needed if unavailable jurors. And do we need a second again? No, the second was already made. Okay. Okay. So it's just a vote now? Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Roll so, call, please. Okay. So with that, um, we'll go ahead and begin with uh, Commissioner Chisholm. Yes. Commissioner West. Yes. Commissioner Steiner. No. Commissioner Gerber. Yes. Commissioner Golden. Yes. And Chair Tosher. Yes. Motion, motion passes. passes five to one with Commissioner Steiner being the lone dissent. Oh, I just want to thank everybody because now I can get back to work. Thank you so much for letting me um, do my job. Right. And with that, we've completed our agenda and I adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you all. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye -bye. So when are you going to do this? Thank you, Robin. Is it pending the members of the jury accepting the, like, what's the date? We need a date. We need a date. Oh, now I will uh, uh, be reviewing with Louise.